Hello and welcome. It's Dr. Sun. Today I'm going to talk about the short bowel syndrome. So first have a look about the intestinal failure. We call it IF. It is defined as a reduction in the function of gut below the minimum necessary for the absorption of macronutrients and or water and electrolytes such as intravenous supplementation is required to support health and or growth. The term IF means the intestinal failure can be used only when there is number one a major reduction in absorptive capacity and number two an absolute need for intravenous fluid support. Now let's talk about the classifications of intestinal failure. It has three types type 1, type 2 and type 3. Now comes to type 1. It is an acute onset, usually self-limiting conditions with a few long-term sequelae. It is the most often seen following the abdominal surgery or in the context of clinical illness. It's really, really important. Intravenous support may be required for few days to weeks. Now comes to type 2 intestinal failure. It is less far common and the onset is also usually acute following some intra-abdominal catastrophic events just like ischemia, vulvulus, trauma or perioperative complications. It's really really important. It requires multidisciplinary input just like nursing, diabetic, medical, biochemical, surgical, radiological and also microbiological support and this support may be necessary for weeks to months. Now comes to type 3 intestinal failure. It is a chronic condition in which patients are metabolically stable but intravenous support is required over the months to years. It may or may not be reversible. It's really important to understand about this type 1, type 2 and type 3 consequences. Now the majority of the intestinal failure is caused by short bowel syndrome. Now the causes of short bowel syndrome are the mesenteric ischemia, post-operative complications, Crohn's disease, trauma, neoplasia and radiation enteritis. Now let's talk about the pathophysiology of short bowel syndrome. It usually develops when there is less than 2 meters of small intestine left to absorb sufficient nutrients. It's really, really important. In this process called intestinal adaptation, physiological changes to the remaining portion of the small intestine occurs to increase its absorptive capacity. These changes include number one, enlargement and lengthening of the villi found in the lining epithelium, number two, increase in the diameter of the small intestine is really important and number three slow down in peristalsis or movement for the food through the small intestine now let's talk about the sign and symptoms of short bowel syndrome it's really important number one abdominal pain then diarrhea statoria means oily and bulky stool fluid depletion weight loss and malnutrition and also fatigue too now, some persons with short bowel syndrome may have complications caused by malabsorption of vitamins and minerals such as deficiencies in vitamin A, D, E, K, B9 means the folic acid and B12. It's really, really important. Other than that, we have calcium, magnesium, iron and zinc. This may appear as anemia. It's really important. And also hyperkeratosis easy breathing and muscle spasm, poor blood clotting and also bone pain. Now let's talk about the complications of short bowel syndrome. It's really really important. Number one, gallstone and kidney stones, intestinal bacterial overgrowth, peptic ulcer means the PUD and also weight loss and malnutrition. Maybe you are thinking about okay gallstone and kidney stone, how it's possible. Now here is the explanation approximately 45 percent of the patients may develop gallstones due to disruption of the enterohepatic circulation of the bile acids it may lead to gallstone formation it's really important and 25 percent may develop calcium oxalate renal stones due to increased colonic absorption of 
oxalate that leads to formation of renal stones now let's talk about the management of the short bowel syndrome it's really really important the aim of the treatment are to provide nutrition water and electrolytes to maintain health with normal body weight number two utilize the central or oral roots as much as possible it's really important number three minimize the burden of complications you need to control all the complications it's really important number four allow a good quality of life so the bottom line is the proper medical management is really really important and necessary for the patients of short bowel syndrome that's all for today Thanks for staying with us and have a great day.